All right, hopefully you guys and girls will join me on this new stream. Okay, we are going to see if we can not freeze up here. All right, his head moved, his head moved, right, right. Uh, we had a crash, guys and girls, uh, way back into the uh, tutorial, um, which sucks because I had a whole lot I said um, so hopefully uh, we'll let it uh, catch up to itself I'm getting I'm still getting a lot of buffering I can see myself in the preview freezing up I do not know if it's a weather thing uh, if my uh, IPS or ISP internet service provider is uh, uh, having issues or something right now uh, but I am buffering a terrible echo I don't know about the echo guys um, that's I don't know what I can do about that one is anybody else hearing an echo okay so again um, I do not know what's going on. I can I can see the buffering too in my preview screen. Um, I don't know if uh, there is a uh, a problem if my ISP internet service provider is um, hearing uh, or not hearing, but having some issues and everything. But um, we froze up a good ways into that project. And um, I think you guys lost me around the word dream or maybe a little before that or something. And um, <clears throat> man, it sucks because I had a whole lot to say, uh, a whole lot of information and stuff. Uh, and I don't, you know, these are recorded as they're made, so I don't, I'd have to go back and it's buffered right it's froze up so i don't even know what i said myself so i'm gonna have to just kind of re repeat um okay oh man all right all right all right let's uh let me see if i can get back to
where we were. Oh. Oh. Brutal. Yeah, we're definitely going to redo uh, redo this. Uh, we're going to revisit this uh, another time. It'll probably be... Might even do it tomorrow. I don't know. But... I want to see. Are we still? I, what, let's let's get, let's have a little discussion. Let's uh, do a little Q and A for a few minutes, and let's see if I, how our buffering does. Because I can see myself freezing up in the preview. I can see myself kind of looking like um, who was that guy back in the day, uh, uh, Maximian or whatever. That uh, he was kind of a robot in the TV for like MTV and all that stuff. Uh, that's what I that's what I see on my computer screen. Um, my face and everything looks like him. <laughs> but a lot of, uh, I'm not sure what all is uh, going on. And <clears throat> now let me ask you this. Uh, other than the audio or other than the video freezing at the word dream or when we froze up and stuff, you guys uh, give me some feedback on this. Did you at least hear me talking in the information I was saying? Even though you couldn't see anything moving on the screen, could you at least hear the audio? Max Hedrum, there you go, Tippy. Tippy's got it. Max Hedrum. That's what I feel like right now because that's what I see in my preview. It looks like I'm all over the place. I do not know what's going on. I'm going to have to get on the phone with my ISP and see what uh, if they're experiencing some kind of difficulties. Okay, so you were able to hear the audio. Uh, and so you were able to hear the details of what I was talking about, but you weren't able to see the actions and things of what was happening because everything uh, froze up. That's good, because maybe you'll have you'll retain the audio, and then we'll go back and just revisit. We'll look at uh, what we did and everything um, when we talk about the tabs and all that stuff and everything. But because uh, I can't remember everything that I said, <laughs> I know you guys heard a lot, but not everything, right? Um, so, Tippy, you had no buffering through the entire project. You were that's great. That's wonderful. Um, I don't know what a fire stick is, but uh, um, okay. So Bob Bob said that uh, the buffering could be from the text. That's an interesting one. Um, all right. Well, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch over to back over to our screen. Um, and let's see what happens. I was pulling my hair out a moment ago. Uh, hopefully everybody that was in the older stream has come back, uh, and everything. And I'm going to take it slow, not too slow. Cause it's already nine o'clock and I still got a couple of projects. We want to Amazon fire stick. Okay. So, you know, we did have a lot of text and all. Uh, in this project. I don't know if that would have anything to do with it, uh, but I am getting a lot of CPU usage, so uh, possibly, right? Could be. Could be, could be. All right. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep uh, bobbing and weaving so you guys know if I'm not, uh, you know, that I'm moving around. Because <laughs> my screen's not moving right now, just me. Um, the... Uh, Basically, what we had done is uh, I've laid out each of the signs with the text or the words or the phrases that I wanted to use. And I ended up uh, using uh, the nesting tool uh, within the Vetric VCAR Pro software. VCAR Pro and Aspire have the uh, nesting tool. Desktop does not. So if you guys are using the VCAR desktop, basically just position the individual placards, we're going to call them, on your board and space them apart to where a router bit uh, would be able to fit in there and still leave you a little bit of material to, um, you know, between each piece and everything for our tabs and stuff like that. Uh, basically, I had a 
uh, quarter inch uh, spacing, you know, for my tool diameter with about an, uh, an eight eighth inch clearance around that bit and everything. So it's about a sixteenth and a sixteenth on each side of that bit. Um, but as you can see on the screen, I've got it took two sheets, and I'm going to try to zoom out. I'm going to move slowly now. It's like I'm crawling, right? Uh, I don't want to freeze up. But uh, it's going to take two sheets uh, to cut out these nine individual quarter-inch thick placards. Um, and then, of course, they would get it here to the backer board that I make or what have you. Uh, so the nesting tool helped. It just basically rotated them 90 degrees uh, so they would fit onto the board and everything. Now, I'm going to... Uh, close out of my nesting tool and I'm going to move back over to the toolpath side of the software and on the toolpath side of the software on the text all the text I did a V carve toolpath with an eighth of an inch flat depth eighth of an inch flat depth uh, I gave myself a little ten thousandths of an inch start depth so the lines around the Algerian font uh, give a little bit more definition and um, uh, but uh, an eighth of an inch flat depth and I was using an eighth of an inch bit to get into you know the areas of the letters and all and wherever the eighth inch bit couldn't fit of course the V bit would take over so now the um, with that toolpath created or calculated and I named that toolpath 01 Sheet one V carve 60 degree V bit. I put in the name of the toolpath a little bit of information that helps me know what that particular toolpath is for for when I run it. Now, the when by doing that and having the flat depth, it created two toolpaths for me one with a pocket for my end mill and one with a V bit for my 60 degree V bit. Then I turned around and did a profile toolpath on each of the parts and I added tabs and I was talking about these tabs need to be in alignment with each other between the two parts they need to be in alignment with each other to help reinforce that area uh, there's going to be very little area left between these signs very little material should I say and so uh, we want to reinforce the area uh, by putting these tabs kind of in alignment of each other. Now, I named this, this is the second toolpath I was running. Um, so I named this uh, O2, uh, Sheet 1 Profile uh, Toolpath for 0.25 end mill. Now, I'm only using a 16th of an inch tab on this. Depending on what my preview is going to look like for the cut, I may want to go with an 8th inch tab, right? Uh, depending on how much material uh, you know I'm going to uh, have remaining and how sturdy the parts are going to be uh, the tabs on the ends are going to help hold those parts so that the areas sorry and I have the hiccups again uh, the tabs on the end are going to hold those parts uh, if there's very little material between the two parts of each of these signs then the tabs on the end are help hold that position in place so I'm going to open up the preview this is where the buffering may occur and I'm gonna preview all of these tool paths and that preview is going to use a lot of and I know what will slow down the buffering if I turn the pixels down some so you're gonna get buffering Not too bad. It didn't buffer too bad. Okay. Now, the one thing I can notice here is I don't know if I'm cutting on the inside of the line or the outside line because I'm getting pretty close, pretty, pretty close to my letters, and I know they weren't that close before. So let me look at my tool. Yeah, 
I machining on the inside of the line. That should be the outside of the line. That was my fault when I calculated that toolpath. I thought, man, that's a lot of material left between those signs and uh, my letters are really close. So we're gonna recalculate that. Let's see how we do. We're gonna reset that and we're gonna preview it one more time. <clears throat> Lord have mercy. Come on computer, come on internet service provider, come on whoever's screwing me up because we got a lot to get through and I want this to be a productive class. There we go. That's what it should look like. You see how there's absolutely no material left between the signs other than the tabs themselves. Now the question is, our side tabs should be enough to keep this part, uh, you know, keep the parts in position and everything. And by lining up the uh, tabs in between, um, we're reinforcing that area. Now the question is, is the sixteenth of an inch uh, going to be thick enough? Um, you know, is it is it enough uh, to hold it? If it was wood, probably so. MDF, maybe not, right? Who knows? Uh, so make your tabs a little bit thicker if you need to, because there's very little material between the signs. Our end pieces, our end tabs are going to help hold this in place, but you definitely want those tabs aligned across from each other to build one big connection there between each of the signs so that material stays there. Do you understand what I mean? So we definitely want to do that. Now rinse and repeat. Uh, if you are using the nesting toolpath, you have to reopen the nesting toolpath to activate sheet number two so that you can create the tool pass and profile cuts for sheet number two. Now, if we need more spacing between those parts, we have a whole lot, we, we could probably you know add more spacing and it would throw one of these signs from sheet one onto sheet two uh, and everything and give us some more spacing and all for a little bit more meat between those signs. But, um, you know, that clearance, that clearance, that's what's going to be, you know, that clearance. Uh, you'd want to increase that if you need some. Okay. If you need some meat there. All right. So don't you buffer on me. Yeah. So, um, Tippy is saying, uh, can you uh, center the signs on the board? Yes, we can. You know, if we wanted to. Absolutely. Um, all right. So each of these are grouped together. I'm trying to be slow about it. Uh, I need to ungroup each of these individually. Because I want to just create the toolpath on the text first. It's going to be a V carved toolpath. I'm going to give myself a little 10 thousandths of an inch start depth, flat depth of 0.125, and 60 degree V bit, eighth inch end mill. This is going to be the first toolpath of sheet two. It's the V carve, and it's the 60 degree DEG V bit now what you may not have seen because I was frozen up and everything is when I was talking about how I would lay this out when I was talking about painting the signs individually and all um, what I would do would I would be masking off uh, these individual areas I would know what my heights and stuff were and I would pencil mark these positions you know, I'd put a pencil mark where the center, kind of like the center of the space is between each of these. And I would throw some painter's tape down and I would paint these boards or these sections different colors. Just whatever fancied my boat, you know what I mean? Whatever colors I wanted to paint. Because I'm going to paint the whole entire board different colors. Each of these little placards are going to be a different color. 
once that paint dries and cures and everything, I'm going to put some Aura Mask. Aura Mask is a stencil film, Aura Mask 813. I'm going to put some Aura Mask on the board so that when I carve, it will carve, uh, creating a mask uh, where these letters are carved at that I can that will allow me to paint these letters individually without getting paint into my background color um, and keep the paint and everything uh, without so I don't have to sand or any of that stuff. I can just, when the paint dries, I can peel the aura mask off and all my letters will be painted. The aura mask has a bit of a tack to it. Uh, it's not a strong tack, but there is some. So I wanna make sure that what I'm painted the, when I paint the board, the background board, that I, I give it time to cure. Um, you know, you know, uh, enough that when that aura mask and when I peel it off, I don't want it to take the paint with me. So the paint's going to be brushed on very light, like a chalk paint of sorts. Uh, chalk paint is really good, um, uh, for this. And as I was saying is if any of the paint peeled off, if any of the paint were to peel off or anything, uh, then that's fine. It's going to be part of the decor because all of the edges I'm going to be sanding and scuffing up and everything to give a little bit of a deterioration in a sense, kind of a deteriorated look, weathered look, you know, to the edges of these. Um, uh, and if, if that aura mask were to peel off little sections of paint and all, I'm not going to go back and retouch them up or anything. I'm just going to leave it. It is, it's part of the decor. You know what I mean? But if I let the paint cure well enough, and if I don't use a heavy coat of paint, you know, uh, just a nice chalk paint or something, very light coats, then that aura mask isn't going to peel it off at all or bad. Um, and so now that the tool pass, uh, let's calculate them. And then, of course, uh, now I'm going to do the profiles. And the profile toolpath, quarter inch deep, quarter inch end mill on the outside of the line. I am going to add tabs. Um, and you can edit your tabs depending on what material you're cutting. If you want them a little bit thicker to, for a little bit more meat and stuff. Um, but I'm going to add tabs. I'm going to add four tabs to each project. And I'm going to click the add tabs button. And then I'm going to make sure that there is, uh, you know, uh, sufficient material. There'll be sufficient material between these odd shapes and stuff. So I'm not too worried about them. And I am going to add a tab to each of the ends. And then we'll calculate that toolpath. So this is going to be my second toolpath for sheet two. It's going to be the profile cut and it's a 0.25 in mil. All right, so we can preview uh, those visible tool paths. All right, now I want to look at the word dream here. And I'm going to go back into that toolpath, 0.01. Let me turn the color off on that. Let 
Okay. So that looks fine. <clears throat> My little offset lines, uh, they're, they're close in You know, I didn't know if I needed to do any spacing or anything, but no, it looks fine. All right. So, and of course, we would paint that much better looking, blah, blah, blah. But, so that would be the signs. And then, um, I don't know, Dream, Dream is catching my eye for some reason. Uh, the text, there should be a little bit more white space between these offsets. The A is really throwing me off because it's like right on top of it. Uh, those little offsets and everything. I want that white space and it just doesn't look good. So let's... On Dream, I'm going to change that text. It's It's... Throwing me off. Um, okay. I'll just go with kind of a Bernard font. Uh, no, let me stick with the fonts that I'm using. That one just doesn't look good. Bear with me a second, guys and girls. We're going to go with the Kokoma title. And on this one, I've got to convert the dream to curves and I've got to trim away. I'm trying to watch the screen, make sure I don't buffer. Uh, I want to trim away these loops. I got three loops on the M that I've got to clean up. Uh, and yeah, just the M. And so I'm going to open that toolpath back up and I'm going to add in that new uh, dream text, but I need to group. Group is the fourth icon, first row of the edit objects. Um, I'm going to reselect all that text and recalculate it. And let's reset that preview and preview the visible tool pass. That dream, the, the Algerian font was just throwing me off a little bit. Um, the Algerian font was just throwing me off a little bit on that one. Now, of course, these are, you know, when I nested these, it didn't nest them in order. Uh, but the order that um, I had them laid out, uh, if we were, were to um, remember, it was uh, live, laugh, love, sing, dance. Dream. Live, laugh, love, dance. Sing. Dream. Play. Give and cherish, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> that gummit. Hold on a second. I'll wreck my freaking brain here. I should have made a copy of them so I could keep the orders I know what they're in. Um, hold on. <laughs> Live, laugh, love, sing like nobody's listening. Or nobody can hear. Dance like no one's watching. Dream like nothing is impossible. Live, laugh, love. Sing, dance, dream. Bear with me, guys. 
play like there's no winners. Give. Smile, cherish. Well, really, it doesn't matter. <laughs> but give, smile, cherish. Cherish would be last. I remember that. So whatever order you want them in, I probably would make a copy of those before nesting them like a goofball. I didn't. But anyway, you get the point. All right. So here's our first little home decor sign. Sorry, we had some buffering. We had some issues. We had some complications. Um, uh, there you go, Kim. She Kim's all over. The, Kim, don't confuse me, man. You're all over the place with that one. Ah. <laughs> uh, Oh my goodness, but uh, it's uh, live, love, laugh, sing, dance, dream, play, give, smile, cherish. Or whatever order you want, really, right? The message is the message, man. Whatever you want it to be. All right. And then, of course, you know, these would be attached to some type of backboards. We could, we could cut out an individual backboard, you know. Uh, Three-quarter inch material. We could we could put uh, some pallet wood in there, give it a little rustic look, right, or whatever the case may be. Uh, you you know, um, this would be a great time to uh, if you got some funky old beat up barn wood boards or something that you want to you know make a neat little sign out of. Great little home decor piece, a nice little eye catcher home decor piece and all. Um, you know, make a couple of them. Uh, see if they sell. See if people are interested in them and all that wonderful stuff. You know, if people like them. If not, never make them again. <laughs> That's how I am. If I if, if my inventory, if something doesn't sell, I discount it, get rid of it, and I never make it again. Okay, now let's get past. Okay, we we get we did home decor. Wonderful, great, lovely. I'm gonna save that. Uh, save that sign. I'm gonna save that sign. Uh, and now I'm going to close. I'm not going to open another V car, bro. I'm going to close this one. We're going to start over. Now this one, we're going to make some uh, gift boxes real quick. Uh, it's getting late, 925. So uh, this one's going to get cut out of a long board. I'm going to cut a bunch of different gift boxes, the lids and the bottoms and everything out of this board. Um, so let's go with a... Uh, 20 inch long board is fine, but let's go with a, a one by six, which would be, I think, five and a half inches wide. And it's going to be three quarters of an inch thick. Now, there's there's a couple of things that I'm going to make. One of my one of my favorite things that people like to buy for me is my guitar pick holders. Uh, I make a little swivel lid. It's got a it's got a dowel that the lid swivels on or hinges on uh, in the part, and then at the bottom it's got a little uh, earth magnet catch you know to keep it closed and stuff and um, awesome Ronnie way to go buddy um, so for the quarter inch signs Kim uh, real quick to answer some questions for the quarter inch signs if it's going to be an indoor sign, MDF would be a great choice. Uh, quarter inch MDF, you can pick up quarter inch MDF at uh, Lowe's or you know, or Home Depot. Not Lowe's. I don't know. I don't think Lowe's carries quarter inch MDF. Home Depot does. Uh, Menards, you know, something like that. Quarter inch MDF uh, would be good. Or um, if you wanted to, uh, um, if you had some old pallet wood, the the uh, pallet planks right uh you know i think they're about a half inch or three eighths or something like that a thickness of but you know you can cut those signs out of individual pallet planks right but mdf would be a great because it paints very well uh sands nice gives that rustic kind of look and everything i'd put a i'd paint it white like a base coat of white uh or an, or a tannish color right or something you know MDF is already kind of a tannish color, but I do a base coat. And then I do my individual chalk paint colors and stuff over that. And that way, as I sand the edges and everything, and kind of scuff them up, a little bit of that undercoating of white or, or tan and all shows through and everything. And then the raw material and everything. And then when I put my clear coat on it uh, to seal it all in and stuff, it looks good and all. Um, you know, but I put a base coat under there. But MDF would be a good choice for that, Kim. 
All right, so out of this 1x4, one of the things I make is a little guitar pick um, uh, case, a little box. And uh, on the guitar pick case, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with a rectangle. And I'm going to draw or go into node editing, basically. And I'm going to turn this into a arc here. Not that big of an arc. And I'm going to take and pull this in a bit. On these corners here, All right, let me do it this way. Let me do it this way. On these corners, I'm going to smooth these corners here, both of them. Smooth. Bam. There we go. I want that kind of an organic uh, shape and all. I want basically my, my little gift box is kind of almost like the shape of a guitar pick. So let's undo that. Let's get back to our rectangle here. Okay. So on the nodes, I'm basically smoothing the two points here okay and on these here I'm bringing this in I'm just using my left arrow key to kind of bring that in a bit this one as well and I can either turn this into an arc or I can smooth that also but if I smooth that it gives me kind of this round edge right it doesn't really have that shape so what I did was I turned this line into an arc Pulled it in a bit, not that much, and everything. And then I can kind of uh, start to shape this a bit. And I want this box to have somewhat of a guitar pick, uh, you know, look to it. Um, and uh, a little bit of an organic kind of flow. I don't want, you know. Something like that. Now, the box itself, once I get it kind of somewhat shaped, uh, the box itself, uh, the size of it is, um, bear with me a second, the size of it is, I think it's four inches tall and about three inches wide. So, three and I was close with that one. Okay. Now, with this, I'm going to hold my control key down. I'm going to drag off uh, another part here. This part's going to be the lid. Uh, the lid and everything. And I'm actually, because I want this to, I want to do some inscriptions on the back side. I'm going to go back to my job setup here, and I'm going to make this a two-sided job. We're going to be flipping this board over. I'm going to do a little inscription on the bottom side of this uh, and everything. And uh, this lid is going to be thinner than the actual base, right? This is a three-quarter inch board. The lid's only going to be maybe uh, a quarter uh, three eighths at that, you know, half the size. It's not going to be very thick. I don't want a big, thick box lid. So on this, uh, I want a nice wall. I'm going to take in, I'm going to offset this inward and I'm going to go, uh, a quarter. Uh, uh, it's going to be a little different cause, uh, I usually would trace a guitar pick. Um, but Let's go 0.3 inch offset inward. Let's not do that. Let's go a good half inch inward. There you go. All right. Now, on this guitar pick, uh, guitar picks aren't that big, so I'm actually going to size the pocket where the guitar picks go. I'm going to size it down a little bit. Okay, this is going to be the actual pocket where the guitar, car, guitar picks go. And of course, I'm saying guitar picks because this is a little project that I make, but uh, it could be anything, right? We're just, let's, we're thinking about the concept of a gift box type of deal. Now, um, here on the, 
uh, base and the lid, it depends on which way you want things to swivel and all that stuff. Um, I have a quarter inch dowel, 0.25 D for diameter. If you want to type it in, 0.25 D, uh, when you're holding down your left mouse button and drawing the circle, it'll create that quarter inch diameter. Uh, 0.25 R if you were doing radius, right? Uh, but I have that centered. Let's center it to this. Okay. And then up here, I have a place where a little rare earth magnet goes. And it's going to be in both the lids and everything. So I actually shouldn't have... Uh, this one's got to, let me delete that. We'll, we'll make a copy after we get our holes placed. Now, the rare earth magnets, depending on where you get them from, I get a 10-pack of rare earth magnets from like Harbor Freight, but you can order them online by the hundreds, very inexpensively and stuff. And uh, they generally have about a 3 eighths of an inch diameter. And, and of course, they're different sizes, right? And But they're not very thick. They're very thin. Uh, so I would probably say... Uh, about, I want it nice and flush with the surface and I would usually measure one, uh, cause they do vary in thicknesses and all, but let's go a point one, eight, seven, five, three sixteenths. Okay. Oh, pff, not there. That's the three sixteenths. <laughs> the three sixteenths doesn't go in there yet. The three sixteenths goes in the pocket cut when I'm doing the pocket. Um, this is 0.375, the diameter uh, goofball. All right. Now, once again, I'm going to take and I'm going to center that. Select this first and then the guitar pick. And I'm going to use the alignment tool and center that. All right. And so um, now that I have these uh, shapes here, the lid, the lid of this is going to get the same, uh, not the rare, yeah, the rare earth magnet and all. It's going to get the same uh, cut. Is that so we're gonna double click on this and with the control key held down I'm gonna drag over a copy uh, like that all right now this is gonna be the bottom this is gonna be my top now the rare earth magnet is not going to get milled from the top down right so this vector here is going to get copied or moved should I say to the other side and of course I thought I set this up for a double-sided job and click OK there we go um, this guy here for the lid is going to get moved to the other side all right I think I hit copy to the other side so let's get rid of that I did all right, it's going to get moved to the other side because it's getting cut on the bottom side. That's where the rare earth magnets, when they come together, there's going to be two. One in the lid, recess in the lid, one in the base. Now, the dowel hole, it all depends on what you, what fancies tickles your fancy and everything. But I actually cut a through dowel hole on the lid uh, in everything. Um, so, And I usually use a contrasting color dowel just for appearance, you know. Uh, my guitar pick boxes usually are either a cherry or a walnut, uh, and my dowel would be kind of an oak or something, just a conch or a maple, you know, a contrasting color, just to give a little bit of a difference. Now, on the lid, usually uh, these would have some type of uh, insignia and all. It'd usually be some kind of custom thing, maybe, you know, the person's initial or whatever the case may be, because they are custom orders for me. I had a young lady order three of them the other day. Um, but, uh, you know, whatever little insignia is here. And then on the bottom side, this vector here, the profile for both of these, actually, the profile, uh, these would be copied to the other side. And we're going to do another type of gift box over here. I'm just doing this one right on this side and all. Uh, so this is going to be a top side pocket cutting down about all oh, three eighths of an inch. Uh, profile cuts going to cut halfway through on one side, halfway through on the other. Uh, the hole in the bottom base is only getting drilled three eighths of an inch here. Uh, so that does not get copied to the other side. 
The rare earth magnet is only getting cut in about a quarter inch deep on this side, so that does not get copied to the other side. So only the profile vector for this base gets copied to the other side. Now on the lid, that where the rare earth magnet that gets cut from the other side, so it goes to the other side. And the um, through hole is going to be a through hole. And since I'm cutting halfway through on one side, I'm going to go ahead and make a copy of this to the other side because I'll drill halfway through on the other side. That way I have no tear out. I get a nice clean cut. So let's create some tool paths so this will start to make sense. So let's go over to our tool path and then we'll come back and draw the other gift box design. Um, so, and of course, clean up your vectors. I'm just, this, this would look more like a, have that more guitar pick shape to it, right? Like a big guitar pick. Um, it's the, my radiuses are a little bit too wide here, but I want you to get the concept. All right. So with this, our pocket cut or no nope, pocket cut toolpath, this guy right here. He's going to get cut down three-eighths of an inch with a quarter-inch end mill. Uh, we're going to, this is going to be, I'll just leave it, uh, this is going to be the uh, pick pocket. <laughs> be the pick pocket. All right, so uh, pick pocket. Uh, top side. 0.25 EM. All right, so that'll be the pickpocket. Am I still buffering? It looks like I'm still, you guys are keeping up with me. <clears throat> Turn that color off. Okay. Now for the rare earth magnet on this side, uh, that is also going to be a pocket cut, but it's only going to be, uh, you know, like, oh gosh, they're thin. They come in different thicknesses, of course, M you know, cut it to where it's not and nice and flush. Uh, so I'm going to go with a 0.1875, three sixteenths of an inch. I believe that's what it is. And this is going to be my magnet pocket. Top side, and again, 0.25 in mill. <clears throat> All right, and then the dowel hole, uh, both of these dowel holes, I can select both of these now, they're going to be uh, three eighths of an inch deep. And we're cutting three eighths of an inch deep, and then the other side of this one will get cut all the way through, but three eighths. So it's going to be a pocket cut, and I probably, you know what, this pocket cut here is also three eighths of an inch. So the pick pocket, I'm going to reopen that one back up and just add these two vectors to that toolpath. Okay, pick pocket and hinge, hinge. And pickpocket top side, okay. Because they can actually be added in there. All right. Okay. And then on the profile tool pass for this, they're only going to get cut halfway through. The profile cut is only going to get cut halfway through, so 0.375. And uh, the, uh, I'm using a quarter inch end mill and all, and I will be using tabs because on the lid and everything that gets cut out and stuff, I want, you know, I need to add tabs. And one of the things you're gonna see do here when I create the pocket for the lid, because the lid's gonna be thinner, I'm basically almost like planing it down, you'll see that in a minute. But I want these tabs to be an eighth of an inch thick. So a 16th of an inch on one side, a sixteenth of an inch on the other for a total tab thickness when this part is cut out uh, of an eighth of an inch. And the tabs get, because they're getting cut down at the bottom from the top side to that three eighths of an inch deep, and then on the other side to that three eighths of an inch deep, it puts the tab right in the middle of the board, in the middle of the part to suspend and hold that board into place. 
So this is going to be my profile cuts. <clears throat> for top side and 0.25 in mil. Oops. Keeping an eye on things, make sure I'm not frozen. Looks like I'm not. Okay. All right. Okay, now on the lid, I want I do not want the lid three quarters of an inch thick, so I'm going to be pocketing, and of course the pocket cut will go before the final profile, right? Or it doesn't matter in this case because we're only cutting halfway through, but I want to plane down or pocket down the lid a little bit on this side and then a little bit on the other side. Uh, to get to end up with the thickness lid that I want. So if this is a three quarter inch board, let's say, and I wanted my lid to be a quarter of an inch or what have you, then I'm going to skim some wood off the top here and off the other side. So I end up with that quarter inch piece in the middle of the board um, uh, so that my tabs and all can still hold it in place. So for this, uh, one of the things that I can do is uh, a neat little trick is um, the on the pocket cut I can say that I want my lid right let's say I want my lid to be a quarter of an inch right so in that cut depth I can hit the letter T for the thickness of my board, the software will know the letter T means the thickness of my board, which is three quarters of an inch, minus how much wood that I want left, right? So minus, let's say 0.25, okay? And I can hit equals, and that's gonna give me that half inch, and then I'm going to take and divide that by two because I'm cutting some off the top side and some off the bottom side. So we're going to divide that by two and that's going to tell me how deep my cut depth needs to be. So the thickness minus a quarter of an inch leaves me with a half and I'm going to be cutting that half inch of material away but a quarter of an inch on one side, a quarter of an inch on the other leaving me with a quarter inch lid. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and this is going to be my uh top pick top um i'm gonna call it thinning planing uh uh clearing uh we'll call it clearing whatever you want to call it to you. and it's going to be a 0.25 in mil so we'll go ahead and calculate that toolpath Okay, and we will preview, oops, sorry, I had two, let's, we gotta open it back up because I had the, I had two vectors selected. I only want the lid. This is for the lid only. Uh, let's calculate that one more time. Okay, so if we were to reset this back to a blank board, and if I move that uh, up a little bit, so if we were to preview all the tool paths so far, We've got our pocket where the picks go, or whatever, candy, jewelry, ring, whatever you want it to be, right? We've got the pockets where the picks go. we got our two little dowel holes, our little magnet hole, and then I'm thinning off the surface of this lid a quarter of an inch down so that when I cut that quarter of an inch down on the other side and then I cut this part out, I end up with a quarter inch lid, all right? So my profile cut. Profile cut. All right. Now, I would like uh, a little insignia here or something. So let's go back to, uh, I'll just do um, my initial just for kicks and giggles. Uh, Laney. And let's go with a old. Now I'm going to stretch this out a bit 
and then I don't like the thinness of the line, so I'm actually going to offset it, offset it outward, deleting the original. I'm going to offset it outward uh, 16th of an inch. Nope, not that much. Oh, I don't like this font. Let me change fonts. Let me change fonts. I don't like this font. Uh, where's my other good script font? Bear with me a second there, guys and girls. <laughs> Alright, let me offset this outward. Oh, I'll go a 30 second. 03125. Deleting the original. And what that does is just give me a little bit thicker lines for a nice little thicker cut. Okay. Now on that, that's going to be a V carve tool path with a flat depth. Um, and that flat depth, my starting depth actually is important. I can't start from zero cause I just milled off that quarter of an inch pocket, right? So I've got to start at a quarter of an inch. Um, and, uh, this would probably cut deeper than a quarter, possibly not but I'm still gonna limit that cat depth uh, to uh, an eighth of an inch or something uh, from there. And the reason being, it, oops, select my text there, is I don't want it cutting through the lid of my guitar pick. It's only gonna be a quarter inch thick little swivel lid. And you can make it thicker if you want, whatever the case may be. Okay, and then let's preview the letter L. Okay, that'll be my little insignia on the lid there. All right, now, now I'm going to be flipping this board over, and I would probably, uh, you know, I, my other gift box, I'd probably cut, you know, multiples of these out of this project. Uh, what have you, um, but on my, did I not add tabs to the profile toolpath? But I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna, I gotta create my alignment holes right for this board. But let me get my tabs in here. I didn't even put any tabs in here, so bear with me a second. One, two, one, two. You don't need a whole lot of tabs. Two or three would be sufficient for this. I'm just going to put three tabs on this. All right, let's calculate that profile again. Sorry about that. I didn't have tabs on that part. All right, so now I let's make my alignment holes because those are important. Yep, uh, didn't see the tabs. Tippy, Tippy caught me. Keith, uh, Keith uh, grabbed me as well. Um, and this V card toolpath would be cut after the pocket, not before. So I need to move that down into the list properly. Okay, so let's move things in the list before I switch to the other side and all that stuff. So profiles last, the pick top clearing, that's going to be the first toolpath up at the top there. Um, I've got my hinge is going to be a quarter inch end mill. Uh, the magnetic pocket is going to be a quarter inch end mill. So all those can get milled together. Then my V-bit, then my profile cut. Um, or since I'm only cutting halfway through, I can do all of my <clears throat> all of my quarter inch end mill cuts first and then my V carve last because I'm only cutting three eighths of an inch deep, right? Not gonna affect it. Normally now guys, if you were cutting, you you always your profile cut is always last if you're cutting through a material, but I'm only cutting halfway through on this board. So uh, having the profile not to be last is not a problem. All right, so this is going to be the front part. Now let's get my alignment uh, holes and everything in here. So 
I'm going to draw a quarter inch hole somewhere. 0.25D for diameter. Doesn't really matter where. They're asymmetrical holes. They do not need to be in alignment. They don't need to be in perfect diagonal. They don't need to be, you know, anywhere like that. Uh, so just wherever I want to place them. Um, I usually have vectors because I have a spoil board that uses cam clamps and everything. I don't want a bunch of holes drilled in my uh, <clears throat> my tool pass, you know, in my board, right? A bunch of alignment holes for when I do do two-sided jobs. So I usually have some vectors already where some holes are already created that I would just import a DXF of those uh, in here. But that's on my laptop. I don't have that DXF on this office computer, so we won't use that. And basically the DXF is just two alignment holes positioned already that I can reuse them over and over again. Uh, when I cut my board, uh, there are already holes in my waste board that I can reuse. Because I know the positions of them. All right. <clears throat> okay, that's going to be a drilling tool path. I'm going to go three eighths of an inch deep, quarter inch end mill. I am going to peck uh, and uh, pull the material out and everything. I do like to peck uh, so it doesn't just brrr, bury that bit down in there. I want to peck and pull it out. Um, I don't necessarily need to dwell at the bottom of the hole. So this is going to be my top of board. alignment let's move through this I want to try to get done here quickly quickly so everybody can go to bed uh, preview that toolpath and those holes are going to be positioned first thing on the top of the list okay so of course I wouldn't have a board you know if I was doing a board this big there is going to be something else over here whether it's another couple of guitar pick parts or it's going to be the other gift box that I'm about to draw here, so on and so forth. Um, let's uh, let's take and let's draw out our other gift box before we flip to the other side. For this gift box, it's going to be like a, a, a necklace or, or a pin holder box, or it's going to be a um, whatever tennis bracelet box, whatever you want it to be. Uh, but uh, I use it to make pin holders. Uh, I turn pins on a lathe uh, and stuff in this little pin box. So on the pin box, I'm going to do it up here because I'm going to have a lid and all as well. On the pin box, the actual size of it, let's go into the size tool here. Um, the general size is... Let me grab my... One of my pins. Six, seven, seven point five. And the width is two and a quarter. Okay. <clears throat> and this is going to be the outside of the box. This is the outside. Now, on the inside, my pin is only uh, six inches in length. So, on my rectangle, my pin's only six inches in length, and it's um, not very wide. So, I mean, I could go one inch uh, for the inside here. But I'm gonna. I don't want my. I don't want my pen being fit tight in there. I'll center this in a minute. So I want to give it a little bit more room, right? Just where it can drop in. So I'll go six point five, six and a half. Give myself some room. If I'm gonna put foam in there or something like an insert or something, I give myself some room for that as well. But let's go ahead and uh, let's. Now these lids are going to snap together. They're going to pressure fit together. It's not going to be magnet, none of that stuff. It's going to be a nice pressure fit. Uh, so let's center this up. Okay. Now on here uh, where this pocket is cut, there's going to be a lip 
where the lid will fit down onto this box and everything. So there's going to be a lip and it depends on how wide I want my lip to be. So I'm gonna offset this. I'd like a nice decent size wall. I'm gonna offset this inner rectangle outward um, 0.3 inches and I do want sharp corners. Do I want sharp corners? Mm. No, I don't want sharp corners. I don't want sharp corners. Okay. All right. Because my when my pocket cut gets cut out of the lid, you know, for that fit and everything, um, it's going to be radius on the inside. So I don't want sharp corners. All right. Now, for the, this is going to be the bottom part. Now for the lid, I don't need the inner vector, right? I only need these two vectors here. So I'm going to hold down my control key. Double click, hold down my control key, and I'm going to drag this down. And then let me grab this and move this up. And then let me take both of these and center them up and down on my material. There we go. All right. Now on the lid, we're going to have a pocket cut that fits around this one here. Uh, so that means this has to have a little bit of an allowance. So let's, let's create the toolpath for the bottom first so we can see what's going on here. So we have a pocket cut here. It's going to be a uh, 0.375 quarter inch end mill. Uh, this is going to be the pin bottom pocket. All right. So that's going to cut that pocket out. And then I don't need to be showing you the previews. We'll do all the previews at the end. Let me just create the toolpaths for speed and time's sake. All right, now on here, uh, this area here is on the uh, lid. The lid is going to, when it fits over this pocket, it's going to have all that meat that comes down to here. So this area is going to be kind of pocketed down. I need to create a lip. So between here and here, between, hold down your shift key, between these two areas here, I need to create a pocket and everything, create a lip. Now, when I do this, when this gets milled down, my router bit's going to want to stop here. So this toolpath, uh, or this vector, not toolpath, this vector needs to be offset for the actual pocket cut. And so I need to offset it for just the pocket cut. I need to offset this out. And I'm not going to delete the original, of course. That's my profile cut. But I'm going to offset this out by probably about a sixteenth of an inch. And offset it outward. Uh, let's go a little bit more than that. Let's go an eighth of an inch. <clears throat> there we go. And between these two vectors right here, we are going to do a pocket toolpath. And again, uh, to this one is probably going to be about a quarter of an inch deep. Depends on how much you want your lid to fit. Because uh, it's getting cut out of a three-quarter inch board. So... 3 eighths and 3 eighths is 3 quarter. I want it to be 1 inch thick. So... Three quarter. Quarter. Yeah, let's go, let's go a quarter of an inch on that. Calculate that. And we can preview that toolpath. I said I was going to do the previews at the end, but I want to look at this so you guys and girls can see it. Uh, 
and then there's going to be a profile cut on this vector and I'll add I'll, I'll, I'll add the profile cuts and everything in all the way through um, but there's going to be a profile cut It's going to cut. Now, this is going to be a two-sided project. So again, I'm going to cut halfway through on this side and then halfway through on the other side because on the bottom side of this box, I might want to put, a uh, again, an inscription, a little uh, keepsake and all. On the top of the box might be the person's name, their initials, uh, their graduation date, if I made them a pin for you know a retirement, whatever the case may be. Uh, that would all be done on the lid here. This is the bottom. Uh, so I am going to uh, copy this to the other side. And this profile toolpath is going to be three-eighths of an inch deep. It is going to be on the outside of the cut. We are going to add tabs. I don't think a tab here will be significant because all this material is most likely going to be, there's not going to be a whole lot left there, but we'll still throw a tab there. And we're going to calculate that. Yeah, the tab on the outside is irrelevant. It's not gonna, there's nothing there for it. Okay. Now on the lid, I want a little bit more of a lip for that lid to snap into. So let's go, let's go um, on my pocket cut. Let's go, I'm gonna go three eighths. Let's do it, three eighths. Even a half inch. Point six two five. I'm doubling it up. Okay. No, shoot, die gum it. Let me stop that. Point six two five is too much. That's too much. That's only leaving me an eighth inch on the back side. Sorry guys, I did my math backwards. Half inch <laughs> is what I wanted. I was like, here, let me just split the difference. Uh, a half inch is what I want. So. Okay. Now, notice that I have very a little, little, still got a little bit of my tab here, right? And everything in that profile cut or that pocket cut was cut a half inch and everything. Um, and my profile cuts out here. That tab is going to still be meaningful. These two tabs here, you know, the top and the bottom, everything still going to be meaningful because the other side, you know, it's getting cut out from the other side. But this tab up here, useless. Doesn't even need to be there. All right, so let's get, um, this will make sense when it's all cut out. Uh, now, this guy right here, this big pocket is going to fit around here, okay? So when I cut this pocket out, it needs to be a half inch deep. This pocket here needs to be a half inch deep because I milled this one down to a half an inch. And it needs to have an offset. It needs to be overcut just slightly so it slips Friction fit. This is what holds the two parts together. I need a nice little friction fit, uh, not to where it's like you know tight where I can't get it off, but it needs to be uh, not too tight, not too loose, right? I need a nice friction fit. So on this pocket cut here, the pocket cut is going to be a half inch deep. It is going to be uh, allowanced, offset allowance in a negative fashion. Uh, and I'm going to only go about five thousandths of an inch. I'm overcutting it by about five thousandths of an inch uh, for a friction fit. But if it's too tight, then before I unclamp, you know, uh, the board or anything, uh, you know, I'll test it or what have you. I don't know how I would test it because the parts are connected together, right? But uh, I will tell you, um, and that's five thousandths of an inch. Uh, 0.05, 50 thousandths of an inch. Um, it's going to be uh, just a few thousandths of an inch. Uh, and I would start out with a 0.05, not 005, a 0.05, uh, and uh, see how that uh, works for you. And then do, do it on scrap wood. Don't do it on a nice board first to make your first one of these. And then it's the same for their ever, their ever after. So we got this pocket cut that's going to cut all that out. 
And I don't, we don't need to see the pocket just yet. Let's get everything done first. I kept saying that the last time. And then we have profile cut. And I'm going to go back into this profile toolpath here and add this one in. And I'm going to edit the tabs and add some tabs to this one. Tab here would be irrelevant, so I'm not even going to use it. I'm actually going to get rid of that one. Because those are profile cuts. They're all going to, they're both getting cut to the same depth and everything. Same tool, same everything. All right. And let's go ahead and preview these tool paths and then we're ready to move to the other side. This will make sense in a minute once you see uh, the two parts. One more. All right. Now, if we look at the 2D view at this pocket toolpath here, if we look at the solid view to go from the wireframe, what you're seeing is the wireframe, the center of the bit in the direction of travel, these arrows and everything. But if we switch to solid view, we toggle to solid view up here, uh, then you'll see that five thousandths of an inch overcut. It's overcutting that vector. Okay. It's overcutting that vector so that the two parts will fit together. Think of like an inlay or what have you. Now, uh, 50 thousandths of an inch uh, is not a whole lot of an overcut. Uh, it should be just a nice friction fit. It shouldn't be too sloppy. But if you want to sneak up on it, right, if you want to sneak up on it, then you can absolutely, you know, uh, bring it down some. You know, 0.002, 20 thousandths of an inch, or, or uh, 0.08, whatever you want to do, um, you can sneak up on that fit. You know, you want just a nice friction fit to hold. One, that it's not a fight to get the lid apart to get the pin out, right, of this decorative box, or whatever's inside the decorative box, necklace, whatever. Um, and again, it doesn't have to be rectangle. It could be a square for like a little ring box, or or it could be... Uh, heart shape for a candy box, right? Bigger, you know, and heart shape for a candy box. Same process and stuff uh, for the lid. So if we look at these two parts here, now we're ready to flip things over, but let's get everything put over on the other side that needs to be there. The profiles need to be sent to the, a uh, copy to the other side. Uh, pocket doesn't, none of the pockets or the, anything need to be copied to the other side, only the profiles. So now we're on the back side here. And uh, for the magnet, let's start back on our pick. We're kind of jumping from two different things on our pick. Remember, it's a pocket cut for 3 16 of an inch deep for the magnet. That's the rare earth magnet that's going to be on the underside. Now, er hold the brakes let's first mill out our quarter of an inch cut and you could probably give yourself a little bit more meat than a quarter of an inch board uh, but that's good uh, zero cut depth quarter of an inch this is going to be the pocket milling it down remember we're, we're, we got, we're thinning it out um, now the magnet let me turn that toolpath off. Now the magnet hole will be a pocket cut. How did you flip to the other side? Keith, when you have a two-sided job, when you are set up in the Vetric software as a two-sided job, across your view bar across the top here, you will see a toggle icon. And it's a toggle from top to bottom. It lets you flip to the other side. When you're on the bottom side, your ruler will be kind of this yellowish uh, color, goldish yellow color. And that's just a visual identifier that you're at the bottom side. The arrow is going to be pointing to the bottom side of the board in the icon showing you that you're at the bottom. And then in the toolpath, it's going to say bottom here in parentheses. <clears throat> 
All right, so on that magnet, that magnet is going to be a pocket cut. And uh, again, it's going to be measure your magnets, you know, before you create the tool pass. Measure the thick. Now I want that magnet sitting flush and everything. So we've got a pocket uh, milling that down and then a magnet cut. The hole that's getting drilled all the way through is going three eighths of an inch deep. So again, that's going to be a pocket cut. And I'm using a quarter inch hole here, a quarter inch dowel, you know, would be fine and all. But a way to get a perfect hole, because with if I use a, if I do a drilling operation, and um, I do, uh, you know, drill down, there's a chance that my bit could deflect. Uh, just like with a drill, it kind of wobbles a little bit until it gets kind of seated into the material and all, and it could oversize my hole. So the way to get a perfect hole is uh, to, whatever diameter hole it is, use an undersized end mill, like an eighth inch end mill, which I need to go back and change on the other one. That way when I'm uh, drilling or pocketing, or and use a pocket cut, don't use a drill, sorry, use a pocket cut, and that will get you the perfect size hole for your dowels or what have you. Um, so I'm going to use a pocket cut three eighths of an inch deep with an eighth inch end mill. And I'll go back and rename these for you guys. Cause I'm going to provide a copy of this file for you to play with, uh, preview all the tool paths on this side. So this is going to face plane the other side of this board down a quarter of an inch. It's going to drill or cut pocket, should I say. It's going to pocket the uh, 3 16 inch magnet hole and the, um, did I not do my magnet hole? How deep did I do that one? 0.1875. Oh, I got to start at a quarter, guys. Remember, we got to start at a quarter because we just face planed that quarter inch down. Uh, same thing with this drill hole here. See how it didn't go all the way through? Uh, so the drill hole, pocket cut, it's going to start at a quarter and it's going to cut a quarter or it's going to cut an eighth. It's going to start at a quarter of an inch down and it's going to cut an eighth inch from there, which is a total of three eighths of an inch. So start here, cut an eighth of an inch for a total distance of three eighths of an inch. So let's preview those two tool paths again. So my little 316 inch pocket, and then that's going to be my through hole. And now we're going to do our profile cuts. Now on the profile cuts, I've already got the tabs on the other side, right? And since I created those tabs, I could actually delete those and move back to the other side and grab these profiles one more time and copy them back over to the other side. That way, when I go into my profile toolpath and I click on these here, holding my shift key down, when I check off add tabs, the tabs will already be in there in the exact position they need to be. So I would create my, on my side one, my top side, I would create my profile toolpath first, add my tabs where I want it. Then I would copy those vectors that need to be copied to the other side. I would copy them to the other side. That way the tabs go with them to that other side. And so let's calculate this toolpath. And before I cut this all the way out, I do want to do a little inscription on the bottom side of this guitar pick here. So let's do a little text. Let me turn that toolpath off there. And uh, does anybody remember uh, pump up the volume with Christian Slater? I think his sign off was rock hard. All right. Let's get a font in here. Um, need something that looks kind of rock hard. All right. 
right, let's get it sized down properly. And I've got some overlaps. I'm just going to, I'm not going to do any spacing. I'm just going to weld these together. So I'm going to convert it to a curve and then I'm going to weld. I need to turn off this guy here and this guy. Yeah, and I'm just going to weld those together to get rid of those overlaps. Connect them together. Oops. On my H, I need to turn off that one. We don't want to do that. We don't want to lose those when we weld together. There we go. All right, so I'm going to take this now, group it back together, and I'm going to make sure it's centered on my guitar pick left to right. So alignment, align to selection. The pick profile was the last um, vector I selected, so I want to align left to right. Center that up. All right, and I want to V-carve that. And with it being so small, I don't need a flat depth. Okay. All right. And let's preview. He's going to get moved up here. Let's preview our profile toolpath. All right, now if I preview, uh, I'm not gonna preview all the sides yet. Well, let's preview all the sides. Let's do the other side. Stand by. Shouldn't the magnet be start at a quarter inch down? Yes, it should, and I had to go in there and change that, Harry. Very good catch on that one, Harry. Um, very good catch on that. And so I went back in and recalculated it uh, uh, with the start depth of 0.25. Okay. Guys, we only have two more tool paths to make and then we're gonna call it a night. We didn't get to um, any other crafts besides the gift boxes and the sign and it's to you know it's it's 10 20 um we will do that uh next week we will we will we'll continue on because of the delay and the uh issue we had with the buffering which i apologize for hopefully y'all came back and stuck with it um <clears throat> but uh uh so it kind of delayed things a bit and um having to be a little bit slower uh, we will continue on. There's a couple of projects that I want to... Now, this concept for this friction fit box uh, can be shaped any way you want. Say Valentine's Day is coming up, right? You know, a heart shape um, uh, type situation. Uh, shoot, St. Patrick's Day, four-leaf clover, you know, you've got this friction fit to where you have a lip and then you have... A pocket that is offset just a little bit you know not offset but allowance and allowance in the cut just a small amount so it slips right over so this lid slips right over this edge and creates a nice friction fit and then of course the inside of the compartment here is um, <clears throat> where our our boxes now we haven't created the tool pass for the box that's the last two tool pass we need to make so let's get over here We've got a profile cut, which, uh, you know, uh, that will be the uh, only toolpath that we need to make is our profile toolpath. Now, of course, if I was going to do an inscription of some sort, uh, let's say that I was customizing this uh, for an individual. Uh, and we'll use a monotype Corsiva, which is a really nice uh, uh, font. not when it's all capital letters it's not a nice font hold on a second um bum, 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 bum. let me see here this is where word market comes in handy to pick that nice perfect font uh we will go with a 
modern bold. Oops, not that big. One inch. Whatever I was going to, um, you know, however I would monogram this. Uh, if I wanted to, you know, let's try a marketing script. Uh, again, marketing script would be from defont.com. Not good and it doesn't look good in capital letters. So let's actually do it in lowercase. Let's do it proper. Uh, there we go. And, uh, you know, and then now the marketing font, because it is a script font, we've got to weld it. So we've got to convert it to a curve first. And then I'm going to select just the vectors that are overlapping. We don't need the inside of the L's, the A's, the O's, or anything like that. Oh, that one's not even doing anything. Uh, and we're going to just the vectors that are overlapping and weld. That's the first icon, second row, edit objects to get rid of those overlaps. And then I'm going to use my interactive trim tool to come in here and trim away any loops that I may have. Okay. Now this A loop will not trim away because it's not connected to the other parts of the letters. It's all by itself. So we're just going to delete that out. All right. So I should have no loops anywhere else. Right there I do. Good, good job. Your eyes will start to adjust to um, finding different things. You'll be able to run in and out very quickly and easily as your time goes on and you get better. You'll be able to pick out uh, little anomalies that you see. And you see when it doesn't, when it won't let you trim, like why isn't that letting me trim? Why isn't that letting me trim? Because that actual vector is not connected or intersecting with these lines here. So just close the tool and select it and just hit delete. Okay, it's actually kind of even though it's a loop and it looks like a loop, it's it's by itself, um, and and everything. And that's not a loop. That's just a funky little. Uh, we don't need that there. Um, <clears throat> going to node editing on this one, and I'm going to delete this point it doesn't need to be there okay so with this make sure that you're cutting it on the lid not the bottom of the box uh the lid if this was going to be the insignia which is, i'm not on the lid right because remember we were mirrored now we're flipped over so this is going to be up here on the lid and remember on the, let me group that together. Now remember on the lid that we have just pocketed out that center area down a half inch. We only have a quarter inch left of skin or material here. So if your insignia or whatever is going to be cutting deeper than that and possibly cutting through the material, use a flat depth. Okay, use a flat depth. So I'm going to V-carve this and I... Uh, we'll just uh, leave it as an eighth of an inch flat depth as a just in case. Um, I don't think my eighth inch end mill will be able to fit in there, depending on how big this box is and stuff uh, in a lot of places. So my V-bit's going to be doing a lot of work. See, although that it reached the bottom tab, no, jewel, no tool was generated, no tool path was generated for the flat area clearance tool because it won't fit, right? So it, it just doesn't fit. And... Um, so, and if I come into this cut, if I look at the bottom of my screen on that A, you know, I'm only at about a sixteenth of an inch here. Uh, 0.625 would be an eighth of an inch. Remember, I'm working off the bottom here. 625 would be an eighth of an inch, which is what I've limited it to. And I'm right at the bottom of my letter, so I actually don't need a flat depth on this. So I'm going to turn the flat depth off and recalculate that. I should not cut through because there's, you know. And we'll see when we see the other side if, if there's any holes. We'll find out. 
Uh, but if you're worried that you might cut through, put a flat depth in there. That'll stop it from going through. Now on the bottom here, there would be some kind of insignia or maybe it might be my own custom little stamp, you know, for myself, uh, for my company, whatever the case may be. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, let's see here. It'd be like, uh, you know, congratulations on a successful career or here let's do this enjoy retirement you old bastard <laughs> no we're not gonna do that you old bastard all right enjoy retirement whatever the case may be now this is gonna be we'll go uh uh point five and um you know Pick a font, any font. I'm going to use a marketing script that has a little bit of an outline to it. Get that centered in. And uh, this is a different looking little marketing script. And it looks really nice when it's painted. It looks odd, right, with all these little bubbles and things. We do have an overlap here that we're going to get rid of. But it looks odd with, with this, but it's really nice looking. It's a marketing script uh, shadow effect. Marketing script is from defont.com. So uh, what I'm going to do with this is I am going to edit the spacing on this. Hold down my shift key and uh, I'm going to push that out so I don't have an overlap there or there. Because it's not, it's not like a cursive script. It's just kind of, you know. Okay, so that one will be a VCarve Toolpath 2. I can actually do those together. So I'll open my VCarve back up and add this one to it. Calculate it and uh, preview this toolpath. And let's show you what this one looks like. Uh, what I like about this one is <clears throat> actually the actual letters, if we zoom in, the actual letters are the wood. What's getting cut out is inside of them and around them. So if I were to add some color uh, to this, you would see that uh, that it creates like almost like a drop shadow effect. It's a really nice, uh, uh, cool looking uh, font. Let's give some black so you can really see, you know, it's a neat little font. All right. So we'll do that. Now, one thing that's missing is my alignment pin holes, right? We got to go back to the other side. And these two guys here, my alignment pinholes, they need to be copied to the other side because these holes get cut into my wasteboard. When side one is done, these holes, even though they're drawn on my board, right, and I'm creating a toolpath for them and everything, they get cut into the wasteboard. A lot of people have a hard time with the concept. Um, after my whole side one is carved, that board is going to be unclamped and removed from the table out of the way. And then this toolpath for the bottom side that I'm about to create here, this drilling toolpath uh, is going to cut only a quarter of an inch into my waste board. And this is going to be my waste board alignment holes. And I literally write it out, waste board alignment holes. There's no ifs, ands, or buts, or mistakes about it that these two holes get cut on my waste board. I am not going to preview them here because I don't want you to get the, uh, give you the impression that these actually get cut in the board. They don't. They get cut into the waste board, your waste board when you flip this over. And then your dowel pins go in them, whether you use metal shelf pins or what have you. And then... Um, and then you're going to uh, flip this board over and the holes from the other side, these guys, this one and this one, slip over those pins. Okay? So let's turn off that toolpath. I don't want it even representing on this bottom side here. And then finally, finally, 
we're going to do our final profile cut. And this, uh, by the way, this alignment pinhole, that's the very, 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 very first tool path you run. Then you're going to press that board, flip it over, press it on those pins and clamp it down and do side two. You're going to cut all the side two. So <clears throat> let's go ahead and uh, profile cut this out. Three eighths of an inch deep, quarter inch end mill. Outside of the cut, we're going to add tabs. And the tabs are here, right? Because that tool path was copied from the other side after, you know, that. But not here. So let's take a moment. Let me delete this one. Switch back over to the other side and grab it real quick and say, hey, copy over to the other side there, dude. And then flip back over here. Now I can grab my profile tool pass and the tabs are going to be right there where they need to be. And I'll rename this, uh, but we I got to go through and clean up the names and stuff. But this is going to be side two or bottom, however you want to do that. Side two profile All right, we'll calculate that out. And we'll preview that toolpath. And then we'll turn off the color too as well. Okay, let's turn off the color and all that wonderful stuff. So flip this around to, uh, we've got uh, side two. Uh, on the bottom of the guitar pick, we got a little insignia, rock hard. Uh, and this is the inside of the guitar pick lid. Uh, there's going to be a magnet and a through hole where the dowel pin goes. On the top of this lid of this box, uh, there's going to be, uh, you know, whatever, insignia, whatever. On the bottom, some type of nice little message. And then, of course, when we flip it over and everything, and let's flip it over. Let's try that again. Flip over. On this box here, uh, we're going to have our little magnet and we're going to have a dowel that's going to be glued in to the lid. It's actually going to get glued into the lid and pressure fit into the uh, little pocket there on there so it swivels. It's going to be a little hinge, a little hinge. So that slides left and right. And then, of course, the magnets catch each other to keep it closed. Little guitar pin box. Um, they sell really good for me. And then the pin holder the pin's going to go in here or whatever pin jewelry necklace uh it could be any shape or any size not doesn't have to be a rectangle or what have you um it's going to go in here and then the lid slips right over and pressure fits on there and creates a nice closure and the one thing that i would do is i've got i made this square right it's kind of boring do some radius you know give it a nice rounded edge uh and, and everything on these uh these these uh, profile cuts uh, give it a nice rounded edge so it's nice and organic and smooth and things or run it you know uh, sand the edges and break the edges so they're not nice you know sharp and stuff but a nice little gift box little pin box or whatever the case may be I usually make a bunch of these and they're literally doubled up like this <clears throat> um, now I got to look at my tabs over here there's a problem with my tabs on this lid I got to figure out what's happening there but uh the um <clears throat> uh yeah i gotta figure out my tabs on that one but i cut them out and uh, i usually do like two four six or so at a time uh at a walnut then out of maple out of you know different woods and stuff uh different gift boxes and all and they're nice and if you get that fit just right it's just a nice pressure fit maybe some light sanding that you got to do to get that nice little pop you know, when, you know, when you pull it apart and all that stuff. Um, how much did you allow and did you give the pressure fit? About a 0 .05, uh, Tennessee, about 0 .05. But again, uh, if we look at the pressure fit on that pocket, if we look at the allowance, I said, let's sneak up. Uh, we do, you know, about 20 thousandths of an inch, a negative 0 .02. And if you need to, if that's not enough, Sneak up, you know, 0 0.05, 0 0.01, you know, whatever you need to do. Um, and I'm sorry, uh, point, 
Never, never. Uh, I'm wrong. That's 20,000. That's too much. That's 20,000. This should be 0 0.002 or 0 0.005 uh, with a maximum of 0 0.01. Ten thousandths would be more than enough allowance. 0 0.01. Ten thousandths of an inch would be more than enough allowance. But if you want to sneak up on it, you should be at a 0 0.0. Zero two, zero zero five, whatever. Give yourself just a little bit, you know, and then sneak up on it if you need to. Depends on your CNC and all that. Um, but uh, usually a point zero zero five, and I thought I was right the first time around, but I ended up erasing that and going point zero five, and it just does, that's wrong. That would have been way too sloppy, way too sloppy. So I got to recalculate that toolpath. All right, now on my tabs here, tabs are cut in the middle of the board. You see how they're in the middle of the board there? Well, if you recall, um, my bottom of my box here is getting milled down, okay? It's getting milled down. So that way when this lid fits over, uh, you know, it's all, the box is only about an inch thick and everything. So what does that mean for me here if my box is getting milled down and the tabs are being created, the tabs are being created, you know, in the middle, that means for me that on this part of the lid here, I can only do the profile cut all the way through on one side instead of three eighths and three eighths. Okay. Um, uh, instead of three eighths and three eighths. So let's go back and fix that. <clears throat> I can't, I got to go back into my profile toolpath on this one here. Let's go back. We're on side one now. And I've got to turn off the profile for this side. I can't do that one. Just the, the lid I can, not a problem. So I gotta calculate that toolpath. So just the one side, okay? So only that one side is getting cut. And then on the bottom side here, the bottom side here, uh, on my profile toolpath, um, <clears throat> Again, I'm going to turn this one off. Turn this one off. And I'm just going to calculate the toolpath for that one because I have to create a completely separate and second profile toolpath just for this one. Uh, and it's going to cut all the way through 0.75 because my tabs are going to be at the bottom of the material. Um, Mm -mm. But I'm going to have to do that. All right, everything has got to get reversed on this one. It's got to get, it had no choice, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Um, so we're going to copy these to the other side because the there is no bottom side of this. This is getting milled a half inch down, you know. Um, this has got to get mirrored properly. Uh, let me clean this up, guys. We can't have that there. That can't be there. Profile, that's fine. <clears throat> this is the... This is going to be the bottom of the board. So there's not going to be a pocket cut. That's the bottom of the board. That guy and this guy need to get copied to the other side. All right, so pocket. Move that to the other side. I'm going to not copy it. Move. I don't know why I'm copying. Move to the other side. Okay, so on this side, there should only be... A profile cut. Or just actually an inscription. Don't even need that there. Just the inscription on the bottom side there. Because when I when I do this and let's let's create the toolpath for it, V carve, calculate. Okay. 
when I flip this over, and I'm on the bottom now, everything's got to be done from the bottom. The pocket cut, the profile cut, everything. So pocket cut, we've got to create these pockets. So pocket cut, this is going to be 3 eighths of an inch or however deep you need it to be for whatever you're fitting in to fit in. Okay. This is going to be from here to here is going to be the pocket cut a half inch down, half inch deep. That's going to be the, nope, where's my lid? That's my lid, yeah, half inch deep. This is what creates the lip for the lid to fit around. I'll rename all these for you guys. And then finally, there's a profile toolpath. And this profile toolpath has to be three quarters of an inch deep all the way through. Three quarters of an inch deep all the way through. And I need to add tabs. The tabs are in there. That's good. Calculate that. So here's what this is going to look like. Let's go back to side one. Go back into our 3D view. On the 3D view, we're going to have our holes that are going to get carved in. Let's get this in looking where you guys can see it. We're going to have our holes. Our alignment holes are going to be first. Bam, bam. Knock them out. Then on the guitar pick, all of the quarter inch end mill cuts, I can actually do all of the end mill cuts. So let's even go down here. Uh, pocket cut. That's cutting it out. Hold on a minute. Uh, pocket cut. I got to rename these, but V carve is second to none. Okay, all of my end mills. Bam, 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 bam. Pin, bottom, pocket, 0.25. There we go. So drill holes and all of these can be done with one tool path. They can be saved as one file. Uh, they should be. One of them has an eighth inch end mill, but though, bear with me. Let me find that one. Oh, that's the drill hole path. Bear with me. Uh, right there. Turn that one off. Yep. All of those are quarter inch end mills. Okay. Sorry, guys. All right. So all at once, one file, all of the end mills can be on this one side. They can be run, okay? So, in whatever order. No, could you adjust the height of the tabs to make it taller? I mean, yes, you could, but the tabs are cut from the bottom of the material. Um, so, uh, they, the bottom of our cut was at 3 eighths. So, making it taller just makes it taller from 3 eighths up to zero. So adjusting the height of the tabs wouldn't have done anything for that, Keith, um, unfortunately. Uh, but when I'm cutting all the way through, when I'm cutting on one side of the wood, all the way through the board, tabs are created from the bottom up. If you ever notice, for some people that do profile cuts and they cut, they, if their material's three quarters and they do a profile cut of 0.77 and they have a tab of uh, you know, a 16th of an inch and they wonder why their tabs are so thin and not a 16th wall because they're overcutting the bottom, you know, through the bottom and into their wasteboard by that 20 thousandths of an inch. And that 20 thousandths of an inch gets subtracted from the tab because uh, tabs are created from the bottom up. From the bottom up. All right, let's turn off our color here. We don't need color on here. Okay. So... <laughs> On here, uh, we've got our uh, pocket cuts and, and everything. Uh, now we need the profile cut. 
Oops. Oops, oops. Ah, stupid me. Hold on, guys. Stupid me. All right, let me get, let me organize my tool pass here. Pick clearing. All right, pick is good. Pick, all the pick stuff is good. Pick, 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 pick. Pick is good. Okay, now when I get here to the pin bottom pocket, this toolpath is on the delete. Delete this. Does not need to be there. Uh, pocket cut. That one's good. Pocket cut. That one's not. Delete. Because all that's being created on the other side now. Profile cut is good here. Pocket cut is good here. V-carve cut is good there. Let's get that V-bit up with the other V-bit. And let's get these guys up with the other end mills. All right. All right, one of these, uh, this guy right here is an eighth inch end mill, so we'll move him down, not up, down. Okay, now, so you can see what's up here. Alignment pin holes in the blue. Everything that lights up blue. We got my alignment pin holes. The pick top clearance where it mills it down in a, a quarter of an inch. The hinge pocket area and the hinge hole here. Uh, I don't want this hinge hole. We talked about the hinge hole and getting that perfect cut. I need to open this one back up. I need to open this back up. And this hinge hole, I'm, I don't want these two hinge holes in this toolpath. I want just the pickpocket top side. The hinge holes are going to be their own toolpath. Because they're going to be cut with undersized holes for a perfect fit for that dowel. So I need to create a new toolpath, guys. Sorry, this is getting a little bit overwhelming, confusing for you if it is. Uh, new toolpath, pocket cut. It's going to be cut three eighths of an inch deep, but with an eighth of an inch end mill. And this is going to be my pick hinge pocket. 0.125 EM. This is why we name the tool pass. So in the list, it's not just pocket this, pocket this, pocket this, and you're like, okay, which one's which? All right, so that's going to go up with my other eighth inch end mill. Those two will be run together. Um, I might put them at the very top of the list. And I'd run those first, my smaller stuff first. Okay, so. Bam, that takes care of those. Uh, the alignment holes, the pick clearance of a quarter of an inch, the hinge pocket, the magnet hole on this side, the pocket for the pin uh, lid. So this is the box lid. Okay. This one is the box profile. Box lid profile. This one is the profile for the picks, which is fine. I'll actually just move that up where the picks are just to what the heck, doesn't matter. And then I've got my two V carves. I've got my text V carve and the enjoy retirement. So this is all of side one. So if we were to preview that, uh, let's actually move to the other side and let's clean it up. So on this side, 
waste hole board alignment holes get cut into the waste board very first thing now I've got my flattening of the pick pocket Okay, pick lid, we'll, 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 I'll clean up the names. I'm not gonna waste time doing that. All right, so we've got the pickpocket lid. We've got the pocket four. What is pocket four? That should be my magnet hole. Wonderful. Pocket five should be my drill hole, and that should be an eighth of an inch end mill. Pocket five, if I open that up to look at it, eighth of an inch end mill. So I'm going to put that in the name so I can keep that separate. 0.125 end mill. I'll clean up the names for you guys when I clean up the files for you. Uh, v carve and V carve. All of that V carve can go together. So we'll move that down in the list. Put those together. Actually, we'll put those up at the top. Put that one up there. We'll do the V bit first. Not at the very top. Sorry. Shoot. Shit. Ah. Nope. I don't want to have to change bits. Just sorry, guys. We'll put the V cards down in the list. All right, quarter inch end mill, quarter inch end mill, quarter inch end mill. My eighth inch end mill is going to be down above the V cards. Now I should have a pocket cut for my pin. I should have the pocket cut for the lid and then the profile cut to cut it out all the way through. And this should be a profile cut here and a profile cut here. All right, let's preview all the tool paths. Let's see what we end up with. Oh, that was a little confusing. Sorry. Um, we had to, because tabs are created from the bottom, we had to switch around uh, the, instead of cutting halfway through a profile cut on that pick box or the pin box on one side, then halfway through on the other for the full cutout, we had to move everything to the bottom side and cut everything all the way out on the bottom side because that way our tabs, you can see those tabs there. If I turn off the color in a minute, you'll see those tabs we've got there now. Um, right here the v carve of enjoy retirement should not be there enjoy retirement should not be there so that's that v carve toolpath needs to be deleted deleted This should cut all the way out and I should have my tabs right there because it cuts at the bottom. All right, now it's doing the other side and I'll get rid of this black to make things. Why do I do that? Why does it make sure I'm not buffering that word enjoy retirement should not be there in what you're seeing what you saw. Okay, so something is still not right. On side one, on side one, there's a toolpath that needs to be deleted. It should not be there. But let's fix this one first. On the V-carve toolpath that's enjoy retirement and the text, I need to take off enjoy retirement. It shouldn't be there.
Okay. On the bottom side, which is what I'm on, all those pockets and everything are correct. They should be exactly like they are. Okay. But on the front side, side one, these tool paths that made this thing, this piece out right here should be gone. I got to figure out where it is. So which tool path This is good. This is not where reset my preview back to a blank board. Preview all sides. I think it was already pre previewed, and that's why it cut out. Let me stop this. All right, this is it, guys. Uh, it's 11 o'clock. We've been at it for four hours. We're going to wrap this up as soon as this does this preview and we make sure everything is good. So on the lid, it got milled down a quarter of an inch, then a profile cut with three tabs. Our pickpocket gets pocketed out. Um, we've got our hole for our magnet. We've got our dowel hole on both lids. The pin box pocket for the lid is getting pocketed out right now it's hard to see because i don't have the board tilted to the side but it's getting pocketed out now to a total of a half inch deep and then there's a profile cut three eighths of an inch deep l enjoy retirement this gets flipped over. This is getting milled down. The pick lid is getting milled down a quarter of an inch. Magnet hole. Profile cut. Cutting the part out. Now this should cut all the way three eighths. With the inscription, this is the lid. That's the bottom. This is the one that's a no-no. All the way down, all the way down, all the way down. There we go. Profile cut to cut it out with the tabs at the bottom. Perfect. Okay. All right. So looking at this, this is the bottom, the, the top side here, top side board of the board. Alignment pin holes in the corners. The pick uh, pocket and everything gets milled out. Uh, the pocket and uh, the little dowel drills for the hinge with the letter L cut into it. On the bottom side over on the pick box, uh, we have enjoy retirement. On the lid, we have the opening cut out with an offset allowance. When we flip this over, we've got rock hard at the bottom of the uh, pick box. The lid has got a magnet on the inside, uh, which is at the fatter part of that pick box there. 
and on the lid of our pin box, Laney S is the name, and then of course we have our pocket and everything. So, and there's our tabs because again, we mill down from an inch. So that one was a little confusing towards the end, guys. It kind of got uh, kind of got a little screwed up uh, because of the way the tabs, the tabs kind of threw us for a little bit of a loop. So, but all in all, everything worked out. And that's just part of the troubleshooting when things happen. This is what the preview window is for, to catch mistakes and stuff and catch things before you catch them on your CNC table, you know, um, and, and everything. Uh, I will clean up the names of these files. I'll put everything on separate layers and organize it all nice and pretty. If you guys ever want to make one of these and give it a try and see how things fit together and all that stuff, uh, you'll be able to um, check it out and uh, have some fun with it. I'm going to ask if there's any questions. It's 11 o'clock. It's time to go home. I know you guys are tired and want to get some sleep, but anytime, any questions you have, go ahead and ask them. Uh, we're going to spend about five minutes on questions, if that, uh, and then uh, we're going to call it a night, and we will catch up on this uh, project. We'll recap on it next week with some other craft items. We're not going to go completely over this again, but we will recap on it because we lost so much time tonight. Uh, and then we will um, we will recap on this, make sure everybody had a clear understanding of it and everything before we get into the other projects. But definitely give this one a try. Uh, give your gift boxes a try, your gift signs and things a try for the home decor sign that we talked about. Um, and, uh, you know, gift boxes can be any shape. They don't need to be this rectangular shape. You know, if you do this rectangular shape, do some rounded edges on the profile cut, radius edges to give it a smooth look to it. Um, but heart shapes, candy boxes, jewelry boxes, ring boxes, all these things that pressure fit. Uh, this is what this all leads to. This is just one small uh, sample uh, that could turn into a lot of things when you're thinking about how box lids, the base of the box and the box lid could fit together. Uh, this rectangular sample is a great way to do it. If you're looking for a way to hinge a lid, Think about like a dial type hinge uh, with a magnetic catch. That's what the pick box is uh, and everything. So definitely, um, you know, take a look at that and, you know, have some fun with it for sure. Okay. All right. Um, way, way too late of a class tonight. I do apologize about all the trouble. Hopefully you guys and girls that stuck with me, hopefully you did stay with me. Uh, we will try to keep these classes minimal uh, the next uh, here in the near future so it's not so late at night. But hopefully I did not lose you or confuse you and you got it uh, you got a little bit of an understanding we, we were able to regroup after some things. Um, hopefully it all comes together. I will provide files for this in the Digital Woodcarver Owners Group guys and in the video uh, description for a digital download for those of you that are not Digital Woodcarver customers so that you can kind of play with it and get an understanding of it yourself. Until next time, I'll see you soon. Good night, guys. Thanks for sticking with me. Keith, can you drop a link for the stuff you put on the wood that you peel off later? Oh, uh, the Aura Mask 813. Yes, Amazon.com. Amazon.com. And it's called Aura Mask 813. Aura Mask 813. And uh, give me two seconds before I close out, and I will throw a link on there uh, to a small roll of it. It comes in different size rolls. Um, and I'll get you a link for a small roll. And then of course you can look at other sizes, whatever you want from there. Stand by.
Here's the link uh, for Keith. There's a link right there for you. All right, guys and girls. Y'all have a wonderful night. Until next time, see you soon. I want to thank you for joining us tonight on Spindle TV, your best source for CNC CAD CAM training videos. If you're watching Spindle TV on YouTube, be sure to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe. You can find out more information about our training and products by visiting us at www.digitalwoodcarver.com.